thank you for allowing me to this opportunity to present. Uh, I have no financial disclosures. So uh, excess of abdominal scan after massive weight loss after bariatric surgery uh, leads to poor cosmesis, functional limitations, and is a known infection risk. Uh, this procedure also has a known high morbidity rate, uh, some series anywhere from 23% up to 68% in one series. Um, there's some known risk factors identified in other, uh, in other studies anywhere from diabetes to, um, to the prepaniculectomy BMI and smoking. Uh, so our objective was to further define any of these patient characteristics or um, modifiable uh, risk factors. Our hypothesis is that if we can improve our patient selection, we can decrease these postoperative complication rates. So our methods, we retrospectively reviewed charts from 2005 to 2015 at our single center. Uh, performed by general surgeons for uh, the paniculectomies. We reviewed the uh, perioperative patient characteristics as well as the postoperative complications. Uh, we excluded any paniculectomies that were revision in nature or any of the paniculectomies emer emergent in nature from NSTIs. We stratified the complications based on the clavian dendo severity classification. Our study went from grade one, which was the local wound care, all the way to grade five was death. Uh, 708 patients were included in the study, the vast majority of which were female. The uh, mean age was 42, the mean weight loss was 48 kilograms, and the wean, uh, mean weight of our patients at the time of paniculectomy was 77 kilograms. Overall, we had a complication rate of 56%. Uh, Skin dehiscence, as shown to the right, was the most common at 24%. Surgical site infection, as defined by clinical diagnosis of infection or the prescription of antibiotics, uh, was second at 22%, and then third was seromas at 18%. Uh, one in 20 patients required a blood transfusion, and one in nine patients returned to the operating room. Uh, breakdown of our patients that returned to the operating room, the vast majority were for bleeding. Uh, infection was second most common at 27%, wound breakdown at 16 and then seromas at 4%. Our breakdown of our complications, 45% um, were grade one, 30% grade two, 24% uh, of the patients required interventions, whether it was an interventional uh, radiology drain placement or uh, return to the operating room. Two patients required ICU level care, and unfortunately one patient died in the series, and uh, this lady died on induction of anesthesia um, from cardiac arrest and was unable to be revived. So never actually underwent the procedure. Um, on our univariate analysis, we found that pre-paniculectomy BMI and pre-bariatric uh, BMI were significantly higher in the complication group. Uh, we also found that the patients with complications were older, um, and, we also, and they also had more severe uh, comorbidities with uh, higher uh, ASA class greater than 2 percentage. Uh, accordingly, their length of stay was higher, and their estimated blood loss was also interestingly higher. We also looked at uh, preoperative characteristics, uh, lab values, their history, what uh, bariatric surgery they had, and we found that patients with a diagnosis of diabetes um, were more likely to have the complication, and uh, those that underwent concomitant incisional hernia repair also had a higher percentage of complications. And uh, concordant with the prepaniculectomy BMI, the specimen weight was also higher in those patients. We further broke down by what type of paniculectomies we performed three types at our institution. The uh, belt lipectomy was rare, um, the low transverse, and the fleur de -lis. We found that the low transverse was significantly uh, lower morbidity than the other two. We also stratified by age. We found that as age increased over 40, there was significant increase in complication rates. Uh, Based on that, we did a multivariate regression analysis and found that independent predictors were ASA class greater than two, as well as the paniculectomy type favoring the low transverse paniculectomy. Some limitations to our study. Um, this is a retrospective study, and so there's, the, there's those inherent limitations. There's also heterogeneity. The workup, half the patients didn't even get preoperative labs uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the surgical technique, there's over 16 surgeons uh, performing these, um, and the postoperative wound care um, was different. So in summary, this paniculectomy after bariatric surgery is quite a morbid procedure, and this is known. Uh, some modifiable risk factors that we found were the preoperative BMI and surgery type, and, uh, and then not performing an incisional hernia repair. And so um, 
the non-modifiable risk factors are obviously age, and diabetes, and then their uh, comorbidity severities. In conclusion, uh, paniculectomies are morbid. Maximum weight loss should be obtained prior to the paniculectomy. And then we favor a low transverse paniculectomy alone without concomitant uh, incisional hernia repair. Questions? Jason Fluke from San Antonio. Um, excellent study. I mean, 700 patients. That's that's significant. And you said it was over a 10-year time frame. Yes, sir. How how is it they they were doing so many? I mean, is this still out of pocket paying? I'm supposing like other MTFs, or do, does your plastic surgery department embrace these a lot more than ours? Because we really have a hard time getting them done at our place. That's a great question, and um, and that's been debated at our MTF. If but these were all performed by our general surgery service. Uh, none of these were done by plastic surgeons. And so we consider this part of the rehabilitation package of our bariatric surgery. And there's been multiple studies and we use that show that patients have improved function and quality of life outcomes after the paniculectomy. And even uh, anecdotally, asking these patients that have these complications that go back to the operating room, and ultimately they're happy with their, with their surgery. So. so. Not, no out-of-pocket paying is what you're no, saying. No out-of-pocket paying, sir. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yes, sir. Daniel Ziegler, Fort Worth, Texas. As you know, the uh, guidelines for surgical site infections just came out in the uh, 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 Journal for the American College of Surgery. Did you look at things like smoking sensation, glucose control, bilirubin's greater than one, uh, their uh, uh, nutritional status to... Was any of that looked at to see if, I mean, all those things can be enacted on to try to get the uh, surgical site infection rate lower? Yes, sir. And as a result of the study, we actually made quality improvement program uh, for our uh, patients to undergo paniculectomy. All of them have to have normal albumin. They have to ha test negative for tobacco metabolites. They have to have a normal A1C if they're diabetic. Um, and, and those are all quality metrics that we, we have to do before a patient get signed up. Also, they have to have a BMI of less than 28. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi. Uh, uh, thanks for presenting this. Uh, it's an uh, impressive number of uh, paniculectomies. You said that they were, uh, I'm sorry, I'm Peter Learn from Walter Reed. Uh, um, you said that these were um, all done by general surgeons. Uh, yes, sir. Was, uh, do your plastic surgeons do many, and are there differences in the outcomes between uh, general surgeons and plastic surgeons, as there is some debate about um, expertise in, in doing these? That's a great question. Uh, this study was strictly general surgeons. We did not look at our plastic surgeons. They do perform them, but those are out of pocket because they're considered cosmetic surgery if the plastic surgeons do them. Um, I know there's several NISQIP data, uh, data studies that have shown uh, superior outcomes for the plastic surgeons over general surgeons, but there's also limitations in those studies and what their indications were for. Okay, Lieutenant Commander Tiffany Cox from Walter Reed. I just wanted to hone in on your multivariate regression. Like, what is it that you exactly controlled for when you did it? And then as well, in your conclusions, you state that you didn't want to promote the incisional hernia repair because they had worse outcomes, but you also correlated that with their incision type. So you can also do a hernia repair, right, with the low transverse. So did you look at that? Or when you looked at incision hernia, did you control for how their incision was made, in other words? Um, so we looked at incisional hernia repair overall compared to overall as a risk factor. And then we also did a multivariate analysis with uh, the hernia repair and the the type of surgery and the independent predictor was the the type of surgery but not the incisional hernia. Okay, but what did you control for when you did your multivariate? Uh, our control would have been the low transverse. Okay. 